Hello and welcome back to another update where I cover the latest developments throughout the front line in the Russo Ukrainian war. It is your host, Weep Union, and in this one, we have a significant development in the south. The Russians have launched a new offensive towards Velika Novosilica, where the objective of the Russians is likely to gain control over the settlement. This offensive is taking place from the east, where the Russians are advancing from the recently captured Shekhtarsk towards the settlement itself. We have a new update to the fortifications, thanks to Leifra and Clemens Molin, who both have worked together on the fortifications. It's still work in progress, but they have allowed me to make use of their map. So make sure to check them out and support them for their hard work. In terms of fortifications in the area of Velika Novosilka, we can see that there are two layers. The first layer is near the settlement itself, where there's a lot of individually placed fortified positions. These are areas where the Ukrainians operate with forward positions, who make sure that the Russians do not break through the Ukrainian lines or bypass the positions by acting as some sort of guerrilla warfare threat. If the Russians attempt to bypass, they'll be able to act against any Russian column by flanking their supplies or generally just hitting them in the rear. This means that the Russians can bypass them, they would have to capture them bit by bit. Then there are areas such as this one where the Ukrainians have prepared firing positions, where they are circular or hourglass formed fortified positions which has several areas for tanks and armored vehicles to be placed within and shoot from, and then there's trenches covering them in case of direct assaults. Then there are trench areas such as this one where there's a line located in near the river line. This is all to protect against the southern direction, which is the majority of these fortified positions. Then there's the ones near the eastern parts, which is similar again, Russians have to capture every single one of these, but they're all facing downward direction. This means that the Russians coming from the east would be flanking them from the rear and from the side. This allows the Russians to have a strong advantage against these fortified positions moving towards them. And this is why the Russians waited to launch an offensive operation towards Velika Novosilka until they captured these settlements in the north, as now they are able to flank these fortified positions. Then as a second line of defense, the Ukrainians have uh, these rear positions, which are all firing positions that are prepared with a, a more put together defensive line, which has uh, several firing positions. The objective of these is to cover the entirety of the area to the south, where they are located on the high ground overlooking the southern direction, which is located on the low ground, especially the areas near the river line in the Remesky village and within Vilika Novosilka itself. These are more static defenses where firing positions are established and covers the low ground. Taking a look at the topographic map, we see Velika Novosilka is located at a 110 meter elevation, while the fortified positions to the northwest is located at 160. This is a 50 meter difference and gives the Ukrainian positions in the north a large advantage over the area to the south. This means that the Russians coming from the east will not have a lot of geographical challenges as there will be attacking from the high ground. They also have the flank of the Ukrainian fortified positions. So this means that they will have a much easier time capturing Velika Novosilka than they will have holding it because they then will have to fight over the fortified positions northwest of the settlement located in the high ground. This means that it is likely that the Russians will launch a combined assault to Rostolne in the north to also flank the fortified positions northwest of Velika Novosilka this means that the objective would be to gain control over the fortified positions east of the settlement, not enter the settlement itself, instead fight along the northern flank and move towards the northwestern flank, the objective being cutting off and gaining fire control of Velika Novosilka, cutting it off from its supplies. This will weaken the Ukrainian positions to the south of the settlement and allow the Russians to capture a large area here in the southern parts of the Donetsk region. In conclusion, this new offensive operations is a significant one and it'll have a large effect on the situation in southern Donetsk. Capturing Velika Novosilica is a major 
progress towards capturing the southern parts of the Donetsk region, as there's only two major supply hubs in the area. It is Velika Novosilka and Kodakhova. Following that, the Russians would be able to start moving towards the Dnipropetrovsk region and to kick the Ukrainians out of southern Donetsk, both in the Saporizhia direction and the Dnipro direction. The Russians have also had a difficulty developing offensive operations in the southern parts of the, the southern parts of the Donetsk region due to the lack of supply hubs in the area. The Russians would have to transport equipment supplies through Donetsk city itself and towards Veliko Novosilka, where there's no supply hub. They will have to transport this distance every time or from Volnovakha in the south towards the highway and then up towards the front line. Instead, if they capture Veliko Novosilka, they will use that as a supply hub and they'll be able to launch offensive operations north, northwest and in the western directions. And this will act as a supply hub. And other than that, the southern parts where the Ukrainians launched their offensive operations in the summer of 2023, it is very difficult to supply this area, which is why it was not very prioritized by the Russians during the Ukrainian summer offensive. In the northeast of Novokarenka, the Russians also advanced here. Due to this geolocated footage, we can confirm that the Russians have advanced here in the northwest of uh, Bohoyavlenka and are advancing towards Trudove and the river line moving through here in the northeast. So in general, the offensive operations are developing further north of the villages the Russians have captured. We see this footage here, which as an example of a silent assault is what I call it. The term defines an assault where there's not much resistance. So it's simply the Russians driving up to a forest line, dropping off infantry and the vehicle returns. This is a no casualty advance. This large area was captured with no casualties directly due to the lack of Ukrainian presence in the area. Yet the vehicle is still firing towards the first line. This is only a suppressive fire just in case there are Ukrainian soldiers. But based on the very simple drop off and no counter fire, it is clear that there was none. And it was simply just to be sure that nothing happens during its drive. So generally, this is a very silent assault and there's nothing that really happened during this assault. The Russians simply captured the forest line. We'll get examples of two other types of offensive operations and with two different outcomes. Further north, we see here in the direction of Trivka, the Russians have bypassed Rihorivka from the south along the railways and moved out towards the outskirts of Petrivka. And this is the second assault type that we see. This is an example of a hot assault that is successful for the Russians. We see an armored personnel carrier driving up towards the position they want to capture. It drives in a zigzag motion as there is active Ukrainian artillery fire in the area. They want to be unpredictable. The vehicle drives up to the first line and shoots towards Ukrainian positions pushing them away from the area and attempting to hit their locations. Then a second vehicle drives up. This one is to drop off the infantry. The first one is likely an infantry fighting vehicle, not an armored personnel carrier. And the second one is an armored personnel carrier carrying a lot of infantry and driving up to replace it following the initial incursion where the vehicle then drives up to the front line positions. It drops off the infantry, providing cover fire, suppressing the Ukrainian forces in the area and allowing the Russian infantry to, to then move up to the first line, pick up some positions before it drives off. And that is the second example of armored assaults taking place in Ukraine right now. And as we can see, the muddy season isn't really that effective yet. Despite it being in early November, the Russians are simply enjoying the good weather as the offensive operations continue. And this is definitely not working in favor of the Ukrainians, considering the situation. Further north, the Russians have advanced in the southern flank of Chesev Yard have captured some fortified positions of the Ukrainians and advanced along the road here south of Chesev Yard towards Stupushki. The Russians continued their offensive operations, likely to capture the hill located in the western bank of the canal as they advanced towards the area. Capturing this hill will allow the Russians to overlook the general area south and west of it and create a strong position for the Russians to cross over the canal here in the southern parts 
of the JSVR and generally to develop the offensive operations further in the JSVR direction towards Kosantinivka. Moving further north, we see here in the direction of the turning, the Russians have advanced a slight bit, capturing a new block within the settlement and continue positional fighting in the forest areas within it. So we see heavy fighting continues in the turning direction. The Ukrainians mainly use FPV drones to stop the Russian offensive operations. Following that, they launch some counterattacks to attempt to push the Russians back out again. We have seen some back and forth, and now the Russians are back in the settlement again. We see in general that the offensive operations continue in this direction and a third example of offensive operations which have a different outcome than the previous two is this one which was uploaded by Deep State Map. In this one we see that the Russians launch offensive operations with armored vehicles in the Venodarivka direction and we see an example of how the Ukrainians deal with these offensive operations. There is an armored personnel carrier carrying a lot of infantry, which was hit by two drones before it was disabled. Following that, the drones that were reconnaissance covering the area dropped some grenades on the infantry disembarking from the vehicle. So the drones are able to disable the vehicle during mid-assault, but aren't really able to destroy them unless the FPV drone operator is very skilled. This is due to how both the Russians and the Ukrainians have adapted due to the situation and are now building these armored vehicles in a way where it covers for the drone strike like the cope cages and everything else that they've developed since. This allows these vehicles to have a lot more survivability against the drones but the drones are still able to disable the vehicles as we see in the footage which I had to delete because you know YouTube. But you can check it out on Telegram, both on my channel and Deep State Maps channel for the full video. So in general, we see the offensive operations going both ways here in Southern and Eastern front lines. Moving up north towards Vovchensk, we have some developments here as well, where the Russians have managed to advance within the apartment complex area and the Ukrainians have recaptured the aggregate plant yet another time. Here we see that the majority of the apartment complex area is now under Russian control. In a settlement where the majority of the buildings are completely destroyed and raised to the ground, controlling the few apartment complex areas determine who controls the northern parts of the Vovchensk direction, but also the aggregate plant, which is why the Russians and the Ukrainians keep going back and forth over it. Despite that, the aggregate plant is also completely destroyed by now, as we see from some old footage from the last time the Ukrainians recaptured the aggregate plant, and we see just the complete destruction of these buildings and the general area around it, and this shows exactly how difficult it is to fight within Vovchensk because there's practically no cover from the complete destruction of the settlement. Further west, the Ukrainians also continue offensive operations where they manage to recapture some parts of Staritsia. So we see heavy fighting continues in the north by Vovchensk as well and in the Kharkiv region where the Ukrainians have attempted to recapture some parts not just in Hluboke but also in Staritsia and Vovchensk as heavy fighting continues. With that, we conclude the territorial changes and the developments since my last video, which was less than 12 hours ago. And this just shows how dynamic the fighting is right now. And in relation to the US election taking place today, which will have a significant impact on the Ukraine war, I've also updated my profile picture. Let me know what you think of it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out my Patreon and YouTube membership for additional content. Thank you for watching. And thank you everyone who's supporting me and have a great day.